There's now a simpler way to understand New Jersey's finances. This is the Issues Watch podcast. Hello, I'm Jeff Kazerman, Vice President of Government Relations at the New Jersey Society of CPAs, and welcome to the Issues Watch podcast. In September, Governor Murphy signed into law legislation that requires the state auditor to annually issue a reader-friendly summary of the New Jersey Annual Comprehensive Financial Report, better known as the ACFR. The legislation was drafted by the NJCPA and the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and is, for me, one of the most rewarding victories that I've participated in my 33 years here. Making this 400-plus page document easy to digest will allow lawmakers, the media, and the public to become more aware of the state's true financial condition. This summary will also include per capita comparative statistics from mid-Atlantic and Northeast states. Furthermore, it requires the state auditor at the beginning of the annual budget process to appear before the Senate and Assembly budget committees to testify on the ACFA report. Joining me today to talk about the importance of the ACFA and why this new law will be so helpful is Audrey Lane, president of Garden State Initiative. We've had a strong, long-standing relationship with GSI, and I'm quite pleased to have Audrey with us today. Welcome, Audrey. Thanks for having me today, Jeff. I appreciate it. Can you start out by telling us a little bit about what GSI does? Absolutely. The Garden State Initiative is a policy think tank, and our mission is to strengthen New Jersey by analyzing data, including monthly labor reports um, and researching issues that affect the state's economy. Uh, we provide an alternate voice and we think common sense uh, policy solutions in a state that promotes new investment, growth of jobs, creation of economic opportunities and innovation that will benefit all New Jerseyans. Um, our last two research reports, and you may be familiar, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into them a little bit, um, sure. especially the New Jersey's fiscal cliff. Um, and you may be familiar with that report that we put out. And then we put out another research report on the economy as it as, on energy as it relates to the economy. So mm -hmm. these are the kinds of this is the kind of work that we do. So, Audrey, my experience has been that most lawmakers, reporters, and those involved in public policy have absolutely no idea the, that the ACFR exists or what it reveals about the state's finances and why it's so important. Can you tell us why it's so important? So, absolutely. Let's let's start with just a brief description. So, the Annual Comprehensive Financial Report, or the ACFR, um, is a financial statement that provides an overview of the state's financial position as a whole. It includes information about various funds, assets, and importantly, liabilities. The ACFR is audited annually, and um, it's really put out to ensure accuracy and transparency in the government government's finances for the state. Yes, and uh, I have to admit that I'm one of the people who didn't know that there was such a report. Um, I thought it was the annual budget and that was that. Uh, and, th and there's so much in there. Um, and we can talk about this a little bit further, but uh, that, you know, independent authorities, all these state entities that nobody's heard of, uh, or they've heard well, of them, but they don't realize, you know. Well, it's a 418 page report, actually, last year as well. So, so it's understandable that nobody is diving into this on a daily basis yes. and that it's not generally used, um, which is why we're going to get into, you know, this this new legislation that that's exciting and provides us with a with a snapshot of of really the top line of the report. Right, um, right. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us, like, what are some of the main differences between, you know, the annual state budget and the act for? Right. So so the budget. Um, is a comprehensive financial plan that outlines the state's anticipated revenue, expenditures, and fund balances 
for a specific fiscal year. So as we all know, the governor gave his state of the budget address a couple of months ago, outlining his plan for the fiscal year 2025 budget. It's one year taken in isolation. The reason this act for is so important is because taken on its own, it does, there's no context for the budget. You know, there's no context as to where it lies within our assets and our liabilities. Can we afford it? Once you put it into this bigger context, we can start to get an idea of whether or not the state can afford the budget before us. So what are the ACFRS public worker pension and health benefit numbers reveal? Listen, New Jersey needs to reform its pension systems and its retiree health insurance system. Uh, these legacy costs consume nearly 20 percent of the total state revenues, and this is simply not sustainable, as you likely know. Uh, the state's pension and health care obligations are significantly higher than other states, and that becomes evident once you go through the numbers. Right. And are we looking at like 150 billion in liabilities for them combined? Over time. Uh, over time. Yes. Put, yes. Right. And to put that in context, the 2024 budget was 53.1 billion, and the 2025 budget is proposed at 55.9 billion. Um, so when you look at annual budgets and then this long-term liability, you know, again, this gets into how we can paint a picture and and why looking at the budget in isolation isn't as helpful. Right. You know, I'm sure I'm sure there's certain administrations that would love to just throw this number and not compare it to other years or compare it to what we can afford, but it really um it's irresponsible to do so. Right. And I know your organization, as well as ours, have uh, and many others have argued for pension and retirement benefits for public workers, uh, some sort of hybrid of 401k and a pension and all those kind of things. And eventually, I think something's going to happen. <laughs> so besides these pension and health benefit numbers, um, which are pretty glaring, what do you see as some of the other most important items in the act firm? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make really us read does, the whole thing? <laughs> well, it reveals the state's financial situation and context. So look at it this way. You can give a budget and say, okay, we're spending too much. And in return, we're getting all these great services and our infrastructure is going to improve and we're going to improve our energy grid. But if you look at that same budget and you see you have all of these liabilities and you see the revenue outlook, you start to say, you know what, we need to make choices. So New Jersey needs to focus on state spending on vital public services, reallocate remaining funds that measurably increase the state's attractiveness. And we need to look at education on an inflation bust adjusted basis. Our per pupil spending has increased nearly 17% during a, a decade of declining enrollment. So there are details wow. like this that you can start to pull out. Um, we just need to continue on a path of budgetary resilience and information like this will, will you know, hold legislators feet to the fire because we can find the real facts and the real data to push them on these, these types of issues. So the, the act for, uh, as you know, the, the new statute, requires the state auditor to release annually a plain English summary of the 400 plus page act for which is difficult to understand uh maybe not for cpas but everybody else and one of the good things about it is that it will also the statute will require a comparison of key statistics from neighboring states and then the auditor is also going to have to testify on the act for before the legislature's budget committees, which I think is great. So maybe, you know, people will start hearing about this and know more about it. So any thoughts on how uh, lawmakers, the media and members of the public uh, can best take advantage of this information that uh, for all intents and purposes was really not easily accessible before or understandable? Basically, we need to look at it and, and amplify it in any way we can. Right. As your organization, my organization, we all have access to social media. So we need to continue to get 
legislators and, and legislators have their own following. So to the extent right. that we have that now this this condensed report, it's actually a gift for us to yes. be able to amplify it. I do believe, given you know what we read around the budget season, that journalists are going to really appreciate it. Yep. Um, and they'll be able to report on it. So I, I think it's amplification at an extended level because we now don't have to boil down these 400 pages to get out the key points. Members of the chambers that we work with in the state are all we're all on the same page to just increase the um, elevate elevate the awareness of this new document. It, it's a great opportunity. And um, if if I could just touch back, you know, this, yeah. this element this element of the report where you have to compare New Jersey to the other yes. states. That's, that's essential because when we look at things like New Jersey is consistently at the bottom of the national physical health surveys, right? We're the worst place to do business. We have the highest tax burden. We score low on budget transparency and behavior exhibited good financial management practices. And we're 49th in terms of long-term fiscal stability. These wow. are things that, right, that we need to be aware of. Um, and if it's in black and white comparing to the states, that's in the whole nation, but the states around us are really clearly doing a better job than we are. Um, and I, you know, there's, there's, legislation right across the border in Pennsylvania to lower taxes now due to the long-term plan they had to start to step down their corporate business tax. Right. And there's, you know, there's a lot of revenue coming into that state. So we can look there as an example of it's not too late to get started on, on corporate business yeah. tax reform um, right. and see how quickly it's working for them in comparison if we're not making similar changes. Right. Unfortunately, it seems like we're going in the opposite direction with corporate taxes for uh, at least in the proposed budget. So your organization regularly releases intriguing reports on various issues impacting New Jersey's fiscal and economic stability. What what do you have planned? Uh, do you know anything planned for the uh, coming year? Well, absolutely. And I, I think you're going to like it, Jeff. Uh, we're completing a report on teacher pension options. So we're going to compare defined benefit plans with um, a specified amount, you know, in retirement with um, comparing it to a defined contribution plan, which allows, you know, employees to contribute and invest in funds for retirement. Right. It's just a different way of looking at it. For some reason in our state, we haven't given our teachers an option. It actually seems oh. like a prime opportunity right now. We're not saying take away that option, but give them another one. And one of the reasons we really looked at that, this was in in response to the teacher shortage we have right now. There's a lot of legislation in the state trying to combat that, but none of them are looking at the fact that the compensation package for teachers is not flexible, it's not portable, and it's not user-friendly. So right. if we give teachers another option, you know, young people don't want to be necessarily tied into a 15 year plan. If you say, yeah, you know, do you yeah. do this for a little bit? Um, and overwhelmingly, when given the chance, and actually there's a great example in, in DC, when teachers are given the opportunity, they choose the option with the, the pension with more optionality. And hmm. it's really a win win, as we talked about in the, in, you know, the long term analysis of, of the state's balance sheet, pensions right. are a uh, huge drag on. Yeah on our overall liabilities. So if we start to put forth better policy that can help these long-term drags, you know, these aren't quick fixes. These aren't magic bullets, right. but we really need to start to look toward the long-term. Yes, that's great. Um, any idea how long till that comes out? A couple months? I know you just released A couple that. months. I think we're looking to release it right around September um, when people are okay. thinking about going back to school and, <laughs> you know, we have educators. Um, paying attention. So I think we'll take the summer after this budget season. We had two reports kind of back to back here. Um, yeah. And that's that's when we're looking to release. Okay. Well, thanks, Audrey, for joining us. Thanks for your time, Jeff. Thanks for listening and watching. To learn more about Garden State Initiative, go to gardenstateinitiative.org. And for more information about the Act for and other legislation that the NJCPA is supporting and opposing, 
visit njcpa.org slash advocacy.